Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of Low Season Traveller Insider Guides. I'm Kate Burgess. We travel to the heart of the Swiss Alps today, a small town nestled in the mountains called Andermatt. Step outside in Andermatt and hear nothing. It may sound a little strange, but isn't that really just a dream come true? Listen a little harder and hear the marmot whistling and the birds chirping. It really is the perfect place to get away from the hustle and bustle of our busy daily lives. Lars from the Radisson Blue Hotel talks today about the wonders of the low season at a famous Swiss Alps ski resort. Andermatt is not only full of activities, but has focused on becoming more sustainable by using the elements that nature has given them. Hope you enjoy. Hi, Lars. Welcome to Low Season Traveller Insider Guides. How and where are you today? Hello, Kate. Nice uh, for having me today. I'm uh, sitting uh, in my home office, unfortunately not in Andamat, but not far from Andamat. And um, yeah, looking forward to doing this podcast together with you. When you step out of your home in Andamat or the home just outside Andamat, what do you see, hear and smell? At first, I would I would say you definitely hear nothing at first. You, you hear the silence because you have to imagine Andamat is, a, is such a small village, 1,000 permanent inhabitants. So there's really not a lot of noise going on, not many cars. So that's the first, first thing I think people would notice when they are staying in Andamat. And then, of course, um, as, as soon as you step out and then as soon as you start listening a little bit to your surroundings, you can, you can hear the animals, you can hear the birds. Um, you might even hear a marmot whistling a little bit farther away. Uh, and then you, of course, have the cows with the cow bells, which is something typical Swiss, but they're um, very close to the village, so you'll definitely hear them. And you can also smell, of course, the, the very fresh and, and even in the summer, very cool and crisp air of Andamat, so the, the mountain freshness is definitely something you would uh, recognize. And you'll, you'll see the mountains surrounding Andamat, you'll see the, the small river and all the small streams um, taking the, the snow um, towards the main river. So um, yeah, it's a very stunning sight when you step outside of your home. It sounds very much like the place where you step out, take a big, beautiful, big breath, and you look at your surroundings, you say, I'm relaxed. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so Andermatt, sitting within the Swiss Alps, the beautiful German-speaking region is nestled among peaks and passes with lakes and cliffs. Where exactly is Andermatt in the Swiss Alps and what is the best way for people to get there? So Andermatt is in the canton of Uri, which is one of the smaller cantons uh, in Switzerland, which are basically our federal states. Um, as you said, it's it's in the middle of the Swiss Alps or it's, it's pretty much in, in the center. So we always say it's in the heart of the Swiss Alps. Um, it's in the Gothard Massif. So um, you can imagine it's basically nestled right on top of the Gothard Tunnel. Uh, and that tunnel is connecting the northern part of Switzerland, but also um, Germany and then the Netherlands um, to Italy. So if you're traveling to Italy by car, you will always go right uh, underneath Andamat towards the south. So um, in terms of geographical location, it's, it's of course always been, been interesting and then very important for the, for the traveling. Um, and if you wanted to get to Andamat, you can um, drive by car, for example, from, from Munich in Germany, it's uh, four and a half hours to get to Andamat. Um, and of course, if you're flying to, to Switzerland, you would probably fly to Zurich and then it's 90 minutes by car or a little bit more than two hours by train. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that you could also fly to Milan in Italy, which is also just two to two and a half hours away. So that maybe gives you an idea of, of the proximity we have to, to Italy and to the Italian border. Yeah, having three airports in three different countries to pick from to get to a location makes it pretty easy to, to take your pick and find the cheap flight as well. Yes, so um, I think comparing flights can also be a good um, good thing to do, especially with, with Milan. It's, I think it's a very good option. So obviously being in the very centre of the Swiss Alps, it's a renowned ski resort in the winter. 
So surely you have to have a cable car. Does it run of, all year of round? We have a cable car. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Does it run all year round? Not, not only one. So. How many? And um, I think there are in total there are like like twenty or even more smaller cable cars um, to to have like the whole ski resort. The, the ski resort is one hundred eighty kilometers of, of slope, so it's also a very big ski resort. Um, and the s- ski resort usually runs from. And depending a little bit on the snow, of course, from November to at least Easter. So um, Easter this year is, is just uh, past us, um, beginning of April. But you can also still go skiing the, the next couple of weekends um, in, in April now. Um, unfortunately, it, it doesn't run all year round because um, it closes um, then end of April for the May and beginning of June period. Um, but then in the summer, um, it can take you to the top of the mountain again. And so when you are coming in the low season in that uh, summertime, what's at the top? There are a couple of things at the top. So for once, there, there are a couple of restaurants, not only at the very top, but also um, uh, at the middle station. At the middle station, there's actually a kid's restaurant with an indoor playground and then two um, more, more adult restaurants. Um, at the top, there's one, of course, very spectacular restaurant with, uh, I mean, you can imagine the, the terraces that you might have on, on the top of the mountain, 2,400 meters. So you'll have an amazing view of the valley. And then, of course, there are a lot of um, hiking routes that start from the top. Or, I mean, you could, also, of course, hike to the top as well, but you can just save a little bit of time and energy um, to explore the the mountainous surroundings um, from the top of the, the mountain or maybe if you you prefer you can also hike back down to the valley if you don't want to go up you can go down as well <laughs> i like the idea of going down that's my kind of thing get the cable car on the way up chill on the way down <laughs> so speaking of the hiking trails there are over 850 kilometers of walking trails to choose from and Low season is the perfect time to walk as many of these tracks obviously get covered in the snow in the winter. Are there more adventurous overnight walks as well as walks that you can do for just an afternoon stroll? There's both. So there are a lot of um, SAC huts, which is the Swiss Alpine Club, um, which are like smaller huts um, spread over the mountains. So you'll find a couple of those also surrounding Andamat. Um, which can give you the option to, to stay overnight and then continue your, your walk um, the next day. There's, for example, one hike in particular that's um, in, in the surroundings of Andamat. It's um, the Four Headwater Trail. So we have four um, European um, rivers, actually, that, that have their headwater um, surrounding um, Andamat, which is the Rhine, the Rhone, the Ticino, and the Royce. So, um, yeah, four quite important rivers for, for Europe. And um, you can actually do all of those headwaters either in in single day trips, so you go back and forth and then you could stay in Andamat, or you can do it as a five day um, walking tour and then stay um, overnight in one of these smaller mountain huts. But um, aside of those, there there are like so many um, scenic walks you can do for all kinds of of, um, difficulties. So it doesn't have to be high alpine, but there are of course some um, walking um, trails where you would need more equipment, but then there are of course ones that are very suitable for for families with kids, for example, um, to the source of the River Rhine. There are there's one way that's that's really the family friendly. I think it just has 400 vertical meters. Um, it takes you three hours, so it's it's something you could do with with your kids. And then there's the other way that goes. Um, via one of the the peaks so it goes up to 2700 meters which of course is a little bit more um, sporty than than the other way (laughs) and if people are looking to do these walks uh, or even to book the SAC huts as well is it best to book a tour or are they quite well signposted for people to sort of find their own way with a map they are they are very good signposted, so that's something that is, is maintained very well in Switzerland. The, the the hiking trails, so you will always have signs. You will always have like rocks that have like the the typical red and white um, stripes, which gives you an indication of of where the path is heading. Um, I would definitely like recommend to also have a map with you, just to to you know like um, 
um, guide yourself a little bit in, in the in the nature. Um, there are of course options to to have a guide with you. So um, we have a couple of of mountain schools in Andamat. So if you're willing to to have a guide with you, or maybe if you want to have someone who can also tell you a little bit about the about the nature and then the the flowers you can find and the herbs, then then it can be also quite interesting to have a guide. But in general, um, all of the hikes are are possible to be done just just by yourself with the with the signings. And if walking is not your thing, then during the low season months, the cycling is also tremendous. And with many routes opening up for cyclists before cars, making the routes really peaceful, safe, and of course, stunning. I mean, you're in the Swiss Alps, yeah. so they're going to be stunning courses. So yeah. is it similar for the walking where there is cycling of all levels and how should people go about renting a bike? So, um, as you said it, because we're, we're surrounded by so many alpine passes, um, you, of course, are always going to do a couple of vertical meters when you're cycling around Andamat. So if you're looking for like, like a flat country, um, yeah, you'd rather have to go to the <laughs> Netherlands. <laughs> but um, if, if, you're, yeah, if you're looking for the scenic views and for the, for the spectacular, um, yeah, you like the, the roads that are cut into the mountain. I mean, like, imagine how, how they must have been built a couple of, of centuries ago or decades ago, it's it, it just amazing. Um, and if you're maybe not wanting to, to um, struggle up the mountain with, with just your, your muscular power, you can, of course, always take an e-bike as well. So there's a um, bike rental. It's, it's really just across from, from um, our hotel. So it's like half a minute walk. And they have all kinds of, of different bikes. So they have road bikes, they have e-bikes. They have mountain bikes, so there are also a couple of good mountain bike trails around Andamat, and they also have um, a small repair shop. And then even if cycling and walking is not your thing, there is another option. So obviously the windy roads that you talk about, the cut into the mountains, are a dream for a fast sports car. And if that is people's thing, I don't know if it's my thing. It could be. I've never driven a fast sports car before, but I bet doing it around the Swiss Alps is awesome. So are there places that you can rent these big Ferraris or Lamborghinis at all to to drive through the the mountains? So there's not one of those posh rentals uh, in Andamat yet, but I, it could be a good business idea. So um, maybe, maybe that's go, a good Lars. idea for you to it's start a business. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that one of the other hotels in, in Andamat, they have like um, a Morgan and one of these, these coupés um, you, you can rent. Um, and then we are actually going to have one public um, car rental in Andamat, which will be a little bit like, like these drive now or like, um, that you can just book via app. So it's it's not a sports car, but if, if you're uh, arriving to Andamat without a car, it's, it's definitely an option for you to have um, to, or to rent a car for a day. Um, and otherwise, um, yeah, I mean, get the, get the rental car maybe at the uh, airport. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I know that, that uh, just near Andamat as well, that they have the big... Uh, curve from the Goldfinger movie from the the James Bond film which is an absolute classic so that would be pretty cool driving around that yeah, knowing exactly. that the exactly. Bond cruise there's, there's a sign in, in that um, bend so you can definitely not miss it there's a sign saying that that this is the original scene from from the Goldfinger movie and um, yeah those who have seen the the movie they will not only recognize maybe maybe the bend and then the view from from that towards Andamat, but when they drive into Andamat, they'll also see the original petrol station where uh, James Bond or, or Sean Connery um, left um, left the woman in the movie to to I think get off of the car, and he left her at the petrol station. I'm not 100% sure, but that's definitely the petrol station you'll be seeing still in Andamat. Rumor is she's still there waiting for James Bond to come back. <laughs> 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 so. As the snow begins to melt, the golfers come and descend on Andamat with one of the most challenging courses in the region. And, of course, because of its location, this golf course is, is so special. Have you played this course at all? 
I have. Um, I'm, I'm an amateur golfer, but I started golfing in Andamat because, yeah, you, you said it, the, the golf course is quite amazing. And if you have such good opportunities just in front of your, your doorstep, why not give it a try? But, but I'm definitely you know, not, not a good golfer yet. <laughs> Love that. And, and what is the course like? Um, it's it's definitely challenging, you know, because it, it goes up and down a little bit as well. Not not too much, but it's um, you will have you will play, I think, two holes um, up and two holes down. The others are quite quite flat, um, and then again, it's, it's nestled among the mountains. You you also have the cows surrounding the golf course, so like you can you can golf and you will have the cow bells um, ringing in the background as well. Um, and it's it's yeah, it's just a very very scenic golf course. Um, the other thing that's quite special to it is that it actually um, it was built um, with with an ecologi ecological background. So the idea behind building the golf course was not only to have a golf course in Andamat, but also to to they they re renaturated the river. So um, the river running through the valley was was once I think um, yeah inside like these these cement blocks and now it's it's a natural river again which of course is helping the the birds and also the the uh, fauna to to um, expand again and actually um, the number of birds hatching um, in, in that area has has since then dramatically increased so there are a lot of um, birds that even came back to Andamat to to start um, hatching there again. That's awesome everyone be careful with your golf balls. <laughs> yeah and then the other side, it can also be a very interesting place for like like people who want to watch birds because it's it's quite easy to to yeah to watch them in their natural habitats and on the golf course. <laughs> Bird watching and golfing, I love it. What a combo! <laughs> and so on that theme of sustainability, this year Andamat was supposed to host Green Fashion Week, and sadly with COVID, obviously has to be postponed. But yes. I'd love for you so to tell us, things. yeah, so many things. <laughs> uh, I'd love for you to tell us what is Green Fashion Week and adding on to that, are there more practices like you just mentioned about the river? Are there any practices that Andamat are implementing to become more sustainable? So Green Fashion Week, they are um, an, an establishment f uh, from Milan as well, so from Italy. Um, and their idea was was to focus on on really sustainable fashion. So in order to to present your clothes um, at Green Fashion Week as a designer, you have to fulfill um, I think ten out of seventeen criterias to really um, say that you're a sustainable um, fashion brand. And it, it goes not only through the through the material, but also of course to production and how how people are are working on your um, clothes. And, and that was something that we thought thought could be a good fit to Andamat um, to, to combine maybe and then maybe establish a green fashion week in Andamat, which um, would be a little bit different than like the, the glamorous and, and, um, and, and very um, posh fashion weeks in, in Milan and Paris and New York, and then would just, uh, focus on sustainability. And, and um, I think the idea would work quite well because there are a lot of things that the destination itself is already doing um, towards sustainability. So it's, um, it's of course a very popular word in the moment. Everyone is, is saying that they're sustainable, but there are definitely some facts that I would say are, are, are setting us apart from, from other destinations. So to give you a couple of examples, um, we get our electricity 100% by, by hydropower or wind which means we're not using any, any fossil fuels or anything to, to create electricity. Of course, it has to do with, with um, the, the setting of Andamat in, in the mountains and all the water around us, which gives us, of course, a, a good advantage. Um, we are um, CO2 neutral, so we are heating with wood chip uh, fired um, pellets in, in the power plant, so also they are not burning any fossil fuels. And um, in the summer, we actually cover um, the glacier on one of the mountains and also 130,000 cubic meters of snow um, with a fleece, which then can be kept over the summer um, and then can be used again in the next winter to start preparing the slope. So like that, of course, saves you or saves, saves a lot of energy to then create like this artificial new snow because you can, can use the... Um, 
snow farmed snow from the from the summer summer months. Those are fantastic initiatives. That's really great. Yeah. So when exactly is the low season in Andaman? Um, definitely, it basically starts right after like the busy skiing holidays. So like skiing or the, or the winter season is definitely um, our, our main season. And it's um, when of course a lot of Swiss people, but also people from abroad come for skiing. And then it usually, so the, the low season I would say starts the weekend after Easter, because then, then people are, are done with skiing. They want to go to, to warmer countries um, usually, and um, it, it gets all a little bit more quiet and unnamed. So like the, the May um, can be a tough month because it will depend on the weather um, of, on, on what you can do. Um, if it's a strong winter, you will still have um, some snow covering the, the hiking trails. But if it's a, a mild uh, winter, you can already go hiking in, in May. Um, and then throughout the summer, it's, it's, yeah, it's a very, um, very quiet place to come and, and enjoy the mountain air. And are there any disadvantages of coming to Andermatt during the low season? Um, so I think the highest or the biggest one would, would be like the, the unpredictable weather. So it's, it's, you know, we're in a mountain setting um, we cannot guarantee sunshine um, but, but then on the other hand, um, there, are, there are so many things you can do, um, even if you have, have bad weather. So there are a couple of hotels that have a very nice spa area. Um, there are, um, there's a swimming pool. So um, hoping that you might not have, have bad weather the whole week. Uh, and then you can do like all the activities we mentioned earlier, like the hiking, the cycling, the golfing. Um, there are some museums, some smaller ones in Andamat as well that you could could visit. So um, yeah, definitely a, a lot to do. And one thing that um, I like as well is there are a lot of culinary options. And that, of course, is always possible, um, no, no matter what the weather is. Don't worry. Here at Low Season Traveller, we are not afraid of a little bad weather. That's not going to stop us at all. Plus, I bet your definition of bad weather is very different to other people's. So... <laughs> not going to stop people coming there at all <laughs> well Lars thank you very much for joining us today I'm really looking forward to you to chat on Thursday more about the culture and the food of Andermatt yeah that's definitely a good topic and looking forward to uh, yeah talk about food with you soon thanks for having me and take care thank you if there isn't something for everyone in Andermatt during the low season, then I'm really not sure what you're traveling for. Lars joins us again on Thursday for an episode on the magical history, food and culture that Andermatt has to offer. Don't forget to share this podcast with your friends, family and social networks. If you want to hear about a destination, message us on our social channels at Low Season Traveller. More now than ever, travel is better without the crowds. Music